Thailand with your host Dave D. Join us weekdays. Check out all the latest updates on talkingheads-podcast.com. And welcome to Patio, welcome to Thailand again, and welcome to the Talking Podcast uh, studio down here in the Art of Patio. And as per normal in the studio, we have uh, Master Bobby at the end there, uh, Mr. Controller himself. How are you doing, Bob? I'm not in control, but if you want me to be, I can. You are in control because you've got the delete button. <laughs> <laughs> and the AC plug. And yeah. the AC plug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, good night last night. We'll just, we'll just have a quick one here. Uh, just say hello, of course, to our residential man, uh, the man that knows all about the visas, and, of course, from Key Visa, Darren McGarry. Welcome to the studio Thank again. Thank you very much, David. Nice to, to, nice to have you in the family again today. Are you well? Uh, I'm actually... Can you put the TV on for me? Uh, well, I so I don't have to look, look at you all the time. It's not very nice. <laughs> That's not very nice, is it? I've That's why I thought you put it on. No, I turned it off for the reason of because many people said you know they sent us complaints saying that you weren't paying me enough attention <laughs> attention <laughs> uh, we, had, we had a good night last night didn't we Bobby we went up to the Oasis last night didn't we? they were great man we, we, we was jamming yeah. last night the, oh, yeah, the, yeah. the old loft bar yeah 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 up, up, up Mapa, on the Mapajang yeah yeah Mapajang we had a good night didn't we Bob Excellent. Oh, the jam last night. I thought th- you were talking about the podcast. I'm going to get on to that in a minute. Okay. You're jumping the gun now. Now you I tell me to slow gun. down. You relax. <laughs> you slow down. Last night. Let's take last night first. Yeah, that was a good jam for sure. Met some nice guys too. They were basically yeah. jamming all, you know, getting there, all the artists, and then just go up and, and jam away. You do a bit, yeah. Yeah, it was, a, it was a good night, wasn't it? And the food was really the good. The food was really good. Yeah. Really, really good. But, but tomorrow yeah, on the Nathan. podcast live tomorrow night we're having a jam we are doing jam cast yeah yep where we've got artists in jam cast is not donuts so don't even look at me like that all right so <laughs> before you even jam start boxer. before you even start i can see your mouth watering this is jam cast <laughs> where we get a couple of two or three four artists in the studio and basically they just go for it and we have okay. a bit of fun uh, and our maestro at the end of there he will be the man with the you know the stick what they are oh is he one of them is it oh he's one of them he is <laughs> you're out it was like that. the he's magic good. wand he's the magic wand he's the the teacher of teachers should be good. Should I didn't realise we're that big. <laughs> <laughs> Pakwan, Pakwan. Of course, he's got he's got contracts with Harry Potter. I can imagine a harmonica. He's a harmonica man, if you want. Better than skin flute, huh? Yeah, <laughs> skin flute. <laughs> <laughs> Skin well, All right, okay. It's good to have you guys on board tonight, and it's uh, uh, today, and it's nice to have you around the world wherever you're listening. Of course, thank you very much to everybody that's been supporting uh, Talking Heads podcast. Uh, of course, we really, really appreciate it. Thank you for everybody that's coming on the YouTube and watching. And uh, yesterday, over four and a half thousand of you visited our YouTube channel and our website, and that's really cool because 22 days ago we didn't exist. So that's pretty it's cool. Great, that's great. pretty cool. So, awesome. And of course, with you and the visas and all Ooh. the little bits that are happening everywhere and everybody's head spinning spinning around where are we standing at the moment still spinning mate <laughs> <laughs> spinning <laughs> i'll tell you what it's been uh, terrible yeah well it's funny actually because a week ago i don't know where you get your information from right that's from what you, bugs me from you no 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 you <laughs> you said to me last week mm-hmm. they're going to give another month yes i've heard it yes and i said no way yes you know and who'd have thought it i mean we we all worked very very hard up to the 26th you know or to to get everybody's visa organized mm-hmm. and so did immigration and they opened on saturday as well at chayapoom to to finish any applications off that they hadn't done and what happened what did they do darren four days later to give another month <laughs> <laughs> till the end of October. Was you cursing me? You're the first person I thought of, <coughs> and you. I thought, how does he know that? I mean, you know, everybody. When you first said it, I said, no, David, that'll be the payable one. Mm. But I didn't realise, you know that. And I can't. I, okay, I know they extended the emergency decree, mm-hmm. and what nobody can understand, and obviously uh, even immigration are upset because up to yesterday. They were still charging overstay at John TM. They were. Yeah. That's correct. Um, so they didn't know. And, you know, just to spring it all on everybody as it's been done, I think it's a bit, bit, bit naughty. Well, um, they, tried, they tried to rinse it a little bit. You know, they tried to get what they can out of it. Like, it's like squeezing the orange, Darren. I mean, that's what they do. And then suddenly they come up with a new orange. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> you, <you're right. laughs> it's as simple as that. But it, I mean, it, you know, we... Immigration was absolutely pulling mm. their hair out, mate, mm. up to the 26th. You know, right up to the Friday night, they were getting what they could done. And, and then, you know, to take me half to them, 
they, they, they did help a lot of people. And I will agree with a lot of the media, what the media said, immigration worked very, very hard to help these people, you mm. know. Yeah, they do. Now, everyone's a fraction upset, apart from the people that haven't sorted the visa out yet, um, with the one-month extension, because you've got people who have, you know, pulled the taters out to get the visa done by the 26th, and now whatever they've done, they've lost a month. Yeah. Or in their eyes, they've in lost their, a month. In their eyes, but, they could have just sat at home and waited another month. But again, Dave, nobody's got a crystal ball, have they? <laughs> Nobody, apart from you. We, could, <laughs> we um, <laughs> You must be tickling somebody's balls. I'll take that information That's not anyway. very nice, is it? Yeah, but you told me a week ago, I'm lucky Mystic Meg. I'm, it must be these, he these likes, special what things. What can I say? He likes watches. <laughs> <laughs> and sleeps a lot yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, i mean that, that extra month okay it's going to help a lot of people and what they said is after the month but whether we can now believe everything that is said i don't know but after the month they said if you get a letter from the embassy and you still can't fly you can extend for 60 days correct and maybe another 60 days correct so I don't find it very funny <laughs> because it's, you know, we, we honestly thought... The problem is, Darren, it's misinformation. It's the it's chain of information that breaks down all the way around, around Thailand. It's, you know, it's somebody up in the office, you know, up in Bangkok who's there who sends people like us a little bit of information, which is correct, mm. yeah? And then, of course, it gets through the chain, it gets put down around. It doesn't even get to their own divisions, no. You know, and, and they're, they're all misinformed about what's happening. And if we could just have one person who could come on the TV representing the office and saying, this is what's happening, full stop, everybody would know and everybody would be on the same playing field. Yeah. But it doesn't happen like that here. You know it doesn't. No, no. I mean, I read in a certain tabloid, I won't, I won't mention the name. Why? Um Okay, patchy mail. Okay. Um, that, <laughs> that was easy. That, you know, I did check it out with immigration because um, it was wrote in there that if people have got a retirement visa, when mm. they, they can't get a re-entry permit. And okay. when they leave and go to the UK or wherever they're going, they have to, the visa's cancelled and they have to get a new visa before they come in. I disagree with that. But That's not true. Yeah, I can say I disagree with that. I checked it, I checked it out and with immigration so that's that's not that's not true the problem is the problem is in situations like this darren and you're going to agree with me when people are misinformed and they haven't got the right information and they're older people yeah they use the scaremongery tactics mm. okay to push people to do things and they panic which is exactly what's happening with covid now it's a panic attack yeah. and that's what happens with the visa attack Correct. people don't know what's happening and of course you know it's a lot of misinformation well i mean so a gentleman mr barrowman wrote an article yesterday on the internet well known in bangkok i mean he was the first one really who mentioned about this one month mm. extra mm. you know because none of us thought about it so i'm getting all my customers calling and saying oh we're getting another month mm. and i didn't need to have sorted my visa out and i'm saying what month we don't know anything about it you know i did usual checks and they mm. didn't know anything about it mm -hmm. and then obviously a certain person very high up still had the paper on his desk correct yeah, waiting yeah. to be signed yeah. you know yeah. once it was signed then everybody knew yesterday pretty much you know yeah. okay for people who who have already organized the visa or not organized the visa um getting this extra 60 days and stuff you know, should you believe it or should you not believe it? I would probably say, get something organised this month. You know, get it done. What happens? We what, don't know at the end of the month what's going to happen again. What happens to the people that have now done their visa on the twenty sixth? They've paid whatever they had to pay for that visa. They're now ending up with a visa, and now it's been extended for another thirty days again. So in reality, they've paid, but now they're going ahead by a month but the people that never paid for their on the 26th have gained a month as well yeah correct that's what we're speaking of <clears throat> so when we get to the end of the next 30 days correct the situation then let's just say it doesn't change the situation then would be how would that stand for the people that's already done the visa on the 26th and the people haven't done the visa well the people that have done the visa normally have extended it for 90 days or mm. they will have got it something longer, okay. like a retirement visa or something like that. Mm -hmm. So they'll be fine. Mm. Okay. 
the people who want to hang on to the last minute, you know, the ones that like we had coming in on the last day, mm -hmm. you know, to try and find the cheapest deal, you know, running round sure. to all the shops, mm -hmm. you know, just got out of bed on the Friday, you know, the day before. Panic, yeah. Yeah. Um, then they'll just wait again. They'll just wait till the last minute. I think... And, uh, you know, it, <laughs> obviously the p pictures of immigration officials with, um, you know, Kalashnikov stood... You know, behind behind the major officials doesn't scare them. No, you no, know. No, no, but no. I mean, that went too far. Re you know, relations. Well, what are they going to get? They're going to get five hundred baht a day, aren't they? Correct. Come on, I mean, you know, what are you going to put a guy with an AK forty seven at the back of somebody, and I they're know. going, forget the AK forty seven, mate. I'll just pay five hundred baht a day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but he said, hello. He uh, said, you know, that's what we couldn't understand. Why would you bring that into a an immigration? It's silly. You know, it's daft. But end of the day, that you know, people know that. Even if they get to the end of October, thirty first, if they overstay, it's five hundred baht a day. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying about the twenty six. Yeah. I mean, I think I do think that a lot of people went to the twenty six, and I do think that a lot of people went to the twenty seventh and the twenty eighth yeah. to see what had happened. Because if it didn't go into effect and they did change it, or if it was the third day, all it's done really is cost them an extra fifteen hundred baht, and that's if they do get. Correct. Charge for overstay. Because some people don't get charged no, for overstay. That's right, that's right. But I don't think it's this area that has, has really, you know, helped make the decision for that extra 30 days. Mm. I think it's Phuket. Mm. Because they're the ones that, obviously, the people down there have been a bit laxed. Mm. And they reported 1,500 people still hadn't organised the visa. Mm. So I think it's them that's pushed the mm. government for this extra 30 days. You know, they're saying there's so many people still here not flown home. I don't know anybody really yet that hasn't got a visa that is in a position where they can't fly home. No. Um, everybody I talk to, all right, there might be a few misfits, but, but it's not many in, the, in this town now. I think everybody's either been to an agent or immigration, so I've got mm. themselves something organised mm. by now. And they say, they say that uh, hopefully at the end of this month that things flight wise may start to return i mean they're talking uh, I, I did read this morning on a message that i got that they're now looking at a seven day quarantine in asia and, and thailand not a 14 day yeah did, um, did, did they say that they was gonna get the first tourists in this month mm, see how that goes on oa and some other visas yes yeah, non-immigrant right? non yeah, yeah, visas yeah, yeah i mean they bring in the first lot of tourists in the chinese yeah Surprise, surprise. 120 of them. 120. But apparently, apparently there's no COVID in China. Are you fucking, can I swear? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'm not going to do because I know I can. But um, I'm absolutely done fucking founded. They're all coming with their bats. With, <laughs> with this sort of shit, mate. Uh, it's, it's, they, it's, they, it's, it's just unbelievable. They're flying into Phuket, so they're not coming really anywhere near us. Um, whether they'll do quarantine and wear the wristbands and kiss somebody's ass and roll all over the floor, I don't know. Before they get into the um, in, in, into the you know the units where they're staying, I don't know what what the deal is with the Chinese. Um, it's the it's it'd a, probably be a better deal than we've got. Do you think so, Bobby? Better better deal. What do you think about the Chinese coming be in quiet. first? It'll be quiet. Well, that deal got made when that unfortunate accident happened. There, it's mm. karma payback right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Send them back over and do do some more. Oh, you mean when all them died in that boat, but they were yeah, more interested in the is, cave? This is the karmic payback for yeah. two boats know, being down. nice to the two Chinese. Boats. Two boats at the same time. No, two boats, different times. Yeah, and they were more interested in putting the cave on the TV. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. The kids stuck in that cave. I, I mean, listen, that was whatever that was. At the end of the day, it was an, it was a miss fortune of events mm. okay it was a bit silly on the, the guy who took the kids in there in the first place because he should have known he was he was a, he, he wasn't stupid but you know to where it's got to and taking your eye off the ball off thailand is a little bit silly i think and you know the problem is with bringing in tourists from abroad it's misinformation again nobody knows what's what they're throwing stuff up in the air that um just ain't gonna work it's Listen, this is my honest opinion. I've been here a long time, like you. Mike, the days of the of the European truncheon man coming in, mm. pretty much finished, Mike. I think they're, they're aiming 99% at um, 
Thai tourism in, in indoors and they're also sorry in, you know within Thailand and they're also aiming at the Asian market mm. you know they've already said look if we can get 1% of Chinese to come per year to Thailand that would cover all our tourism GDP mm. Well, that's you know, not this true. Is, well, it's not true. It's not but true. this is what the... Well, you've seen the figures, haven't you, that they come up with, yeah? They reckon that each Falang, you know, if, under, if 30, 30 a week come in, they're going to spend 700,000 baht apiece. I, I, I see, I've seen I mean, that the figure... What's all that about? What was the figure? The, Billy, 1.3 billion or something. Was it what, 120,000 people and they were going to spend something like 2.3 billion baht or something, which when you calculate it down to the 120,000, that's quite a lot of money. It's a lot of money. <laughs> so I don't know who's doing the maths. No. <laughs> but, hey, Bobby. <laughs> but now, listen, it's true, the f- amount of phalangs that they're going to let in per week is 30. 30 a week? A week, to start with. And that's going to get 120 every- a month, not 120,000. So, so it is 120. It is 120. I mean, that's really going to get Paddy back on his feet, isn't it? Oh, it's massive. Massive. It's like a pimple on a gorilla's ass, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do with that? I mean, you could fill a pub in Cyber Cow with that many people, you know? <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's just diabolical. It's a little bit nuts, and it's, it's, it's got to be sorted out somewhere or another. I mean, the problem is with um, Thailand. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think that the actual people in charge understand how important tourism is to Thailand. It may be a small percentage of the GP, but they have in the, the income and uh, export and, and import. But the, the actual uh, tourists into Thailand, it creates a lot, a lot of jobs. I'm well, just going to say that it's not just about what they spend. Mm. It's about who, you know, who benefits from it. Mm. Motorbike taxi drivers, food sellers, the girls... All businesses, you know, beach vendors, you know. You, you take, let's say, for argument's sake, on high season, there's one and a half million ties in Pattaya, yeah? Mm-hmm. That's a lot of families, Dave. Absolutely. You know, the, the, our people are helping to feed. Mm. So, obviously, they don't care. You know, I, I just don't see that the... the, the there's, what I don't understand is that the, the people that are here that have got the jobs that support the families support their families that way. So even if they don't get any money from wherever in Thailand, they're still supported by the, their family, yeah? But mm-hmm. if that you take that away from the family, they've got no support, and also they haven't got any support from the other side, so they've got income of zero. Correct. Which at the moment is hitting people massively, massively, massively hard. I don't know where it's going well, to end. This is why it's very quiet here, because, like I said, most of the people that work in the night trade have gone home. They've gone home. They've gone working in the fields or selling food yeah, or doing whatever, do whatever they, have to they do. can. And can you blame them? They've no. Got, no, because they're trying. They're trying. You know, it's um, in, a, in a way, okay, they've... It's been, it's been the tail wagging the dog for a long time, and, you know, it's getting Absolutely. right. But nobody's wagging anything at the moment, but, you know, with the way things are. Okay, the whole of Asia's locked down, mm. yeah. And Thailand are looking, oh, they're trying, but this new tourist visa with the 31 steps, they call it the 31 steps, yeah? Well, that's, that's, that's just about I mean, to be it's disbanded, just, mate. It's going well, to be thrown right. in the bin. Correct. I mean, it's just, it's, uh, I think somebody up in the office that I seen a piece of paper wrote on it, Monopoly, mm. which, which they're referring to the game, Monopoly, yeah? Correct. Uh, mm. Which was a funny, because it was, no, Monopoly Ha Ha was wrote on it. And yeah. I just think that it is. I mean, you know, why would people from a foreign country, like any of us here, in, in, in Bobby, you or anybody, and we're sitting at home in, in America or England or wherever we come from, why would we want to jump through 31 hoops, spend a fortune and quarantine, yeah, and pay for our uh, accommodation 90 days up front, yeah, and the nightlife isn't even working. And the nightlife isn't even the on. The place that. is dead as a And they're a only going to let 30 people in. I mean, it don't make sense, Bobby, no? It doesn't make sense. Um, uh, what about Vietnam and Cambodia? Did, uh, have they opened up? No, no. Still, no. still locked down. Still Bobby. closed. Zero but cases in Cambodia. Mm, yeah. but the, th- the difference is with Cambodia, okay, it's, it's shut down. But with their um, amnesty, it, we, there was no finish to it. They just said, we'll just keep going until we know that everybody's mm. clear. Mm. And that's what they're doing now, mm. you know. They're not messing with people's lives, at, you know, like, like 
at the moment you feel like you're just getting your ass kicked from A to B all the time and then back from B back to A and you're going you step two but steps when, forward and one and three back but covid itself has just reached a million worldwide out mm. of 7 billion people on the planet i'd say that's a very very small percentage and i mean in thailand i think over the last uh, 5 or 10 days or whatever it is now we've had one case but I nobody's believe, died. No, about one case out of 64 million people that live in Thailand. I mean, it's not really... Dave, nobody's died for ages. No. You know, this This is what I can't get my head around. I know, I know they want to protect their own people, but Jesus Christ. There was a, a guy I spoke to yesterday in America, and his, uh, his uh, grandmother, yeah, is 96. She's caught COVID twice and come out of the hospital twice. Wow. Yeah. Strong immune They're putting system. it down over there. They're putting it all down to age and respiratory. Any person that's old has got a bit of respiratory and they have a problem breathing, they are now putting it under the label of COVID. Yeah. Which is... And I believe the UK doing the same. Yeah. If, if you've got influenza or a bad case of influenza, they're putting it down as COVID, not as influenza. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they're raking it in, Darren. They are raking it in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's they're a monopoly right. game. Any, any more upon the visa stuff that's happening at the moment? Any, any more besides what we've spoke about? Is anything changing? Well, <laughs> the weird part about it is that we was waiting for the 26th, and this week was like finding your feet again. Mm. What can we do? What can't we do? Um, you know, what's immigration up to? What we're allowed to do? What we're not allowed to do? This is just threw it all out of... Mm out of the window now so i'm sure we'll be going back to doing what we was doing a week ago but it's not going to be now it's going to be the people that leave it to the last minute mm. again because everybody now is going to be the fo under the impression that after 30 days we're going to get another 30 days or we're going to get another 30 days and this is how it's going to go on you know so i think as far as visa agents are concerned and immigration i think we've had the play isn't there isn't there such a thing from i mean i'm just thinking out loud here and probably bobby will back me up on this a little bit but isn't there such a thing in bangkok where they have a live immigration website from their office that's live all the time and they can put on what's happening this is today the 30 days is now okay and everybody that's got agencies or you know thai uh, immigration places they can all go on that website it's a live website it's live all the time they update it all the time isn't there any kind of thing like that for everybody or is it everybody has to scale the internet correct <laughs> Which everybody, everybody the has to come <laughs> scale the internet everybody yeah. has to come to you darren no, that's right but they do but but again, you have it all fixed it's media in it again well, let's put it down to we're all governed by what people tell you you know, people are telling stuff on the internet yesterday, I'm busy working, and now my customers are calling me and telling me that we've got another 30 days. And mm. I'm thinking, Jesus, hang on, yeah. it's my job. Yeah, sure. And I haven't got time to look. But where is the immigration people getting their information from? Because they really, if, if, if the immigration... Upstairs. Yeah, but that's okay. So if upstairs is telling them, don't worry about it, guys, we've got another 30 days, downstairs is going to go... Don't worry about it, guys. We're going to rake in the money till the 26th, but then we'll tell them after that they've got another 30 days. Don't you think that happens? Of course. Yeah, so there you go. It's misinformation. Yeah. It's it's bending the information. So what I'm saying, if there was a live website from the man at the top who was up at Bangkok and the immigration up there that make the decisions, the government, whatever, and they had a live website, couldn't everybody just work off that? They could, but do you really think... Okay, let's let's put it right. Do you really think they give a toss about us? No. Mate, the, the, they've got, they've seen videos of their own people starving. Mm -hmm. Okay. They've got this serious, serious problem now with the uprising of the students. Mm -hmm. Do you think they care about us? They're not no. interested, mate. They're not going to put the South out to help in, in the way. No, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about local. Mm. I'm talking about the big boys in Bangkok. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. they've got more to worry about, mate. Than, I get that. Than, 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 than a few scruffy phalangs waiting yeah. to go home, you know? Yeah. We're probably we're probably down the list. Yeah, I understand that. We always have been. Yeah. Mm. You know? 
of flying a dog's ass is number 11 we're number 12 but you know <laughs> that's how it's always been you know that i know that because i mean i know people that have years ago that wanted to come to thailand and, and they just couldn't understand how the visa situation worked it you, was confusing you, for years you remember you come through the airport yes you get met mm. by you know some poker face person who makes you feel like you've just done a bank robbery or something you know mm -hmm. What are you coming in for? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You know, and then we went through this stage where, oh, you've had too many 30 days. I'm going to make the decision because I don't like the look of your face and I'm going to deport you home. Correct. You remember we went through that? that? I, I know. And also the paying as well. You know, one, one, one month you're paying to come in, the next minute you're not paying, come in, then it's half the price, then it's full price, then most, it's double the price, then it's under the table price. Most people forget I that mean, come before on. COVID, Everybody was saying, Patsy is quiet. Mm, mm, mm. Thailand was going downhill Absolutely. as far as tourism is concerned. Absolutely. Do we agree, Bobby, or not? We it agree. Was, it was going downhill before COVID hit. Absolutely. As soon as COVID hit, well, that mm. just, that was the last That was the icing the coffin. on the cake. Yeah. yeah Absolutely. That, that, was, that was it. Now, they're saying, well, it's going to take four years to get back to how it used to be. Well, it will do if you don't open the door. I mean, like you said, why, last, we said last week, why don't we do like Sweden did? Mm. You know? Get the Deal best, get the best stuff we can at the airport. Make them do the COVID test before they come. Mm. Best stuff they can at the airport. Test everybody as they're going through. You've got to pay for the test, whatever it is, and then let them in, and then deal with case by case. Mm. And if it's two hundred a day, well, you've got to pay for it here. But if you've got, if you, if you, if you've got a hotel, right? Let's just say you've got a hotel, Bobby, right? And you're in Bangkok. Let's just say, okay, and let's just say that your your room is a thousand baht a night, for example, thousand baht a night, fifteen grand a month. 30, sorry, thirty grand a month for the room, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and then they say, oh, what we're going to do is we're going to use your hotel. We're going to put all these people in that we think have got COVID, or they're on quarantine for fourteen days, and we're going to give you eighty thousand baht for fourteen days. That's one hundred and sixty thousand baht for a month, where it should be thirty. So it's one hundred and fifty thousand baht. A month more you get in are you okay with that yes those people are not going to kick up any fuss to no. say please stop can we get our old customers back please can we just get our tourists back in the hotel please that are going to pay us a thousand baht a night they're not going to say that they're making no. 150 grand for two people staying at their hotel a month times that by two and or they're three not even rooms. using the facilities and they're not even using the facilities <laughs> and they're getting bangers and mash for dinner mm. they're even saving on the food so they're making a fortune 250 rooms 150 <laughs> grand <laughs> extra come on <laughs> that's what they're getting though i've seen yeah, some of the meals know, they get in i know it's terrible i mean it's you know you might as well go down the down the road greasy spoons it's better I under, yeah i agree it's terrible. I agree. We get, you know, they're treated like dogs. Can't even go out the room, some of them. The only people that are trying to get here now is people that have got families. Yeah, I All agree. Right? Let's okay. agree with that, yeah. There's no backpackers going to come here because most of them couldn't afford it. Yep. Um, you're not going to get your vest-wearing guy who just wants to have a bang every night. He's not going to come here. Mm. There's other places you can do that. Mm -hmm. And he's also going to know that Patsy's mm. on his ass because there's that many videos of yep. it every night. Sure, sure. All you're going to get is the people struggling to come here who've got wife, girlfriend, family, kids. That's it. And maybe the old retiree that's been here years and he wants to come back. That's what you're going to well, get. Well, my friend's been coming to Patia and Thailand for 25 years. And in 25 years, it's the first time he's ever diversed and gone to Spain for a holiday for 400 quid. Yeah. I told you my mate normally comes here every year. He's going to the Canaries. Yeah. He's going to Tenerife. 250 quid. Happy 10 days. days all in. Okay, let's start, take a quick one of these. Uh, take a swig of uh, whatever you want to do and uh, let's just uh, have a bit of this. Talking Heads podcast live from Pattaya, Thailand with your host, Dave D. Join us weekdays. Check out all the latest updates on talkingheads-podcast.com. Welcome back to Talking Heads uh, live from Pattaya, Thailand. If you just joined us, of course, Darren Gary in the studio talking about all the visa rules and, of course, uh, what's happening around Thailand and bringing us up to date on what's happening and our controller at the end, Bobby is down there to jump in where whenever you want. We got a we got a quote here from Sean Ono Lennon, John Lennon's son. Okay. Okay, about information. Check this out. So hard to do your own research online these days. You can find equally legitimate sources claiming the exact opposite about historic and current events, politicians, statistics, and even science. 
How are we supposed to feel anything but dazed? I miss the Encyclopedia Britannica. Yeah, absolutely. Great. True, true. But the, thanks a lot for that, Bobby. Nice one. I like that. But the, what I agree with, with you is when people came to Padia, it was a fun town. Regardless of, you know, people used to say, oh, this happens, all that happens, all this. But that happens everywhere in the world. It's more con- it was more condensed in Patia because you're bringing a lot of people into a big pit and they're all having a lot of fun and having a great time. Patia was a great city to be in and around and have a lot mm. of fun and there was a lot of great things here happening. And also in different venues all over Thailand. Thailand was a great place to come to. Man. The problem is now there's a lot of people out there after this I think will be anti-Thailand. Yeah. If I can say something. Um, say whatever you want. Yeah, I think me and you, we was, you know, controlled by the taxing era, mm. you know, when we come here. Mm. Um, and like you said, I used to sit outside my John TM shop when we first opened. There were thousands of flying. You wanted to get on a bar bus to go into Patia on a Thursday night, Friday night. You couldn't. You couldn't. It, they were full. Full. I mean, the the pound was at seventy odd baht to the pound. You know, there was, you know, we were, you weren't looking over your shoulder all the time about visas or you know, it, you felt free. There was Did two, you feel free? Two thousand one hundred, two thousand one hundred and twenty baht buses in Patia, at the height. Yeah, I advertised on three of them. Yeah, that's how good the business was at the yeah. time. You know, mm. they were advertising on them and. It, it was just a fun place to be, you know, the people were fun and it had a vibe about it. I mean, you go up any soy and from 10 o'clock in the morning, the music were blaring yep. and, yep. you know, the girls were coming out. They'll give you a cold towel, even if you didn't, you weren't having a drink. Mm. You know, hello, 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 how are you, how are you, you know, and all, now you don't. It's this shit. The problem Phones. is, the problem, the big, the, one of the big things at the moment I, I fear from the people I speak to and the girls I know and the Thai people I know not the, not the Phalangs but the the, foreigners, uh, mm. but the the Thai people is what they're hitting now of course is major depression they're hitting big time major depression yeah. because they've got nothing I mean I go around and visit a couple of people I know and they've just got nothing there's six in the family they've got you know two or three hundred baht you know it's, it's crazy they've got no income no jobs no anything and, and, and people are doing what they can to help but of course, it's that depression that even even if the doors open next week, the recovery process is yes. it's going to be a long time. If it ever comes back, if it ever comes back, I mean, you know, I always feel for for the guys on you know in the big places like your walking street. Mm. You know, imagine only one of them big big bars, and you know it's been shut for eight months, and you're waiting for D Day and. You, you get this sort of news, you're paying 120,000 baht rent a month. Mm. That's half, probably half a rent, mm. you know, and mm. you must be thinking, do I give it up or what? What do I do? There's a lot I have, there's a lot I have, Darren, and there's a lot, a lot more going to, because, you know, I know, I do know, and I'm not going to say names or anything, but I know a couple that have opened up, they've tried it, they're paying half the rent, they're paying the girls, they're paying everything, yeah, and it just ain't working. And he's looked inside and said, how much does this place cost me? And he's worked it out and said, lock the door. We're not coming back. Yeah. That's it. Sad. Really, really sad. Because there's a lot of great people around Patia with a lot of good companies and bars and, and go-go's and everything. Yeah. The, whole, the, the whole community, you know, is great. You know, everybody yeah. works hard at what they do. And it's a shame to see all that go down the pan. We love to live here. But, and we love the tourists. Not just for business, mm. but for the vibe, for the Absolutely. how it feels. You know, Absolutely. how we used to go to Suwana Boom Airport, and it, it, thousands of people. You know, yeah. you, you know, you don't know, you don't know where to go, and it was great. Mm. You know, they, listen, guys, you listen. I know we keep putting the place down, but it's because we're stuck here, in a way. We're, you know, it, imagine it. It's it's gone from being a place where every person you walk past, you don't know. It's gone to a place where every person you walk past, you know. Mm. It's gone like a little village where everybody knows everybody. You know that's what it's gone like now. Does, I mean, we, we must not we must we must not forget the fact that there's still good businesses here, and it's a great place to live. There's still people doing business here. There's business still operating. There's people here. There's people live here. So businesses, some businesses are still making money and doing and good. We need you guys to get here. Yeah, when you can. Yeah, to, absolutely. To invigorate the place again. I think. I think. Me and Dave have left you a couple. 
<laughs> I think that I think that uh, I think that um, the first drinks on him. <laughs> it's not very nice, is it? What do you reckon, Bobby? The first drinks on me. Why do I always get the bill? You're the richest. You look like a rich guy, dude. <laughs> it does it. I may look like you. It's mate. that brown shirt. Huh? It's it's that is. beautiful brown shirt you're wearing. This no, is an not. old. Listen, mate. Let me tell you a secret. Don't tell anybody. This used to be my curtains. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My missus complains. She draws the curtains. Like, <laughs> I think. From, that, I think the Patrick from the Tandori house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I think. I think that Patio. What's going to happen? I think when Patio opens up, I think what they're doing at the moment is we spoke about this on a couple of shows. Is they're now cleaning up Patio. If you look mm. around you, there's a lot of infrastructure being done. There's a lot of roads up. There's a lot of buildings coming up and being cleaned up. And, of course, the motorway's open, the bypass and all that. And now with the news of uh, Walt Disney, Disney World buying the, 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 the lot now and going to start to build it, mm. that's imminent. Um, I think that the Patio will reinvent itself. That's what I think will happen here. I'm in agreement uh, with that. Uh, I believe it too. Yeah, I yeah. think I, I think the Patio... It's just a matter of time. And this, this uh, episode we've been in has been too long. And we're, a lot of us are anxious. Mm. I think they're gonna. I think that the powers of be uh, know this, and I think that they're gonna use Patia a to clean it up, yeah, and 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 do what they can, and b is when they do open up is to invite more of the family orientated tourists here by different things that they're gonna be doing because it's not just Disney World. There is other things that are gonna come. They're planning to put two of the casinos next to it, okay, which is a plan which they think is going to happen. Um, so I do think that it's going to – I think that it will come back. It's going to take a lot of time. It will come back, and eventually it will drip feed. As soon as they open the doors, as soon as they say it's okay, you can come in, it um, will drip feed. Has the Thai government made any announcements about the or a vaccine? Uh, have they made that announcement yet? I haven't seen any, nothing at all. That's actually good news. Uh, yeah, is it? I think so because uh, I think all the governments are kind of waiting and seeing if they all want to enter this game that's uh, globally being played right now. And they want to mm. say, oh, are we going to play the game or not play the game? Mm. It's a sensitive subject, man. Well, you've, got, you've, got, you've got two worlds, haven't you, Bobby? You've got, you've got your, our world and then you've got the ASEAN world. You've got the ASEAN countries. Mm. They talk to each other, mm. you know, and they're not as, as daft as people think they are. You yeah. know, you've got the, a lot of major players there. They'll make their own decision. I don't think they'll, they won't they will follow lead. And I think a lot of the Asians will take the vaccine if it's offered because they want, to, they want the economy to come back and they'll do anything for mm. that to happen and not they ask about the dark side of, you know, what are the consequences of taking a vaccine, you know? Mm. One of the one of the questions, of course, is what we exactly just spoke about. Uh, that we had, we had a few emails. It says, uh, "When can I? When? Where? Where can I find information about travelling to neighbouring countries and then returning to Thailand during the COVID nineteen? Is there is there any a certain place where they can find that? Well, there's nowhere to travel to. No, no, no. It's just blocked. It's locked down. Every country is locked down. Every border is locked down. Um, my advice to him is stay here and sit tight. Stay here and sit my tight. My advice to everybody is unless you really have to go anywhere just don't go mm. stay here you know because getting back in for the next maybe four to six months is going to be an absolute nightmare, nightmare. okay and All it's right. a chance to see thailand i mean if you want to go up to chiang mai chiang rai you want to go down south i mean That's the right. country's P -P. beautiful yeah pp and places like stay in thailand and visit thailand yeah it's definitely clean up. and yeah i would imagine a lot of people that have been in Padia probably haven't even been out of Padia. you know exactly and there's a lot of places to go in thailand they're absolutely brilliant yeah and you know probably now's the time just to take a nice little trip and take it easy and you don't have mm. to spend a fortune but you know well, I've, I've got a friend of mine who um, who spends time here and he spends time in Phuket and he actually reckons that there's more foreigners in Phuket at the moment than there is here. They say there's about 1,500 here, don't they? No, that was just, just waiting for visas. Okay. That's not how many are there. Oh, do, do we're we, talking about... Do we know well, how we're many? Talk, he said there's thousands. Okay, interesting. Yeah, and he said he said it's... Okay, it's it's a little bit busier than here, 
but people are being very frugal with the money at the moment. Mm, you know, well, you, you can which understand they've got that. to do. You've got to do, haven't you? You, you, can, you can understand that. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, it's, it's the a hour time yeah. with all of us. I mean, all of us. You know, it doesn't matter. All of us. We're all at the hourglass syndrome where the out, uh, you know, the sands, the sand is our money, and then it's it's running out slowly, yeah. regardless of what. Okay, you get topped up a little bit from here and there, but it's a waiting game. Yeah. It's a waiting game that some people are not going to see the end of. But as I said last week, guys. If you've got a girlfriend or a wife and you can't get to Thailand, you can't jump through the 31 hoops or you haven't got the the right connections or you haven't got the right paper, get, get, get your partner over there. Mm. Get her a visa to visit you. Which we've not, which we spoke about before. Yeah, I absolutely. mean, we've, you know, we've had numerous amount of um, emails and, you know, people saying, well, you know, it's impossible to get her over, over to the UK this time. No, it's not. It's the easiest thing in the world. So there you go. So if you are... It's, if it's all right. I'm not saying it's easy to get a visa. What I'm saying is there's no restrictions. I mean, they're off the quarantine list now, so mm. there's no 14 days. They mm. just get off the plane and go straight to your house, mate. That's it. You do the application for him. She gets the visa. She's on her way. Well, like I said, my friend, he's just been to Spain, from the UK to Spain and yeah. back. No quarantine. Away you go. That's Job it. done. Oh, stay in your house for a few days if you can, please. That's, that, it. that's basically it. One question we did get, I don't know if you can answer this actually, but I'm going to pull it towards you. Uh, when will the American citizen, the American citizen services, the AACS unit, reopen for non-emergency passport, consulate reported uh, for birth abroad and national services? That was what he wrote. Do you make any sense of that? American. Yeah, the America. It says the the American citizen services, the ACS. When will it reopen? I yeah, mean, well, that's part of the embassy, the consular yeah. services. Consulars, yeah. Well, they never, they never closed. They're, they're still open, mate. Okay. In Bangkok, yeah. So there you if, go, Rod. If, if you're listening, if if, he's, if he means the outreach, mm -hmm. because they used to do an outreach from the embassy twice a year for yeah. Americans, yeah. where they used to come here and do passports and income letters and things. Um, Obviously, they're not doing that at the moment. So you, if you need it, you, you go online, you make an appointment, you go and see them. i tell you what would be interesting, Bobby. I know you're, I know you're in, at the end doing your thing. I don't know if anybody can find this out. I, I mean, this is another question we get. I mean, are there still flights out of Thailand, even though there is a ban on incoming international flights? Yeah. There is? Yeah. Okay. Because, do, I mean, do, do we know that for a fact? Or? Yeah, we've sent... Half a dozen girls, yeah, to the UK on flights. On flights already, yeah. Yeah. Are they? Are they return flights as well? <coughs> interesting. I'm yeah. telling you, mate. Yeah. That's Cause, because 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 Thai, Thai people can't go mainly to most countries on holiday without having a return flight <coughs> because the immigration officer wants to see transportation to come back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've got to book the return flight. Now, hey, whether that gets cancelled and she can't come back, I don't know. But, you know, it's, you have to, you have to book it. But I've also had people in the UK saying, we can't get flat, my girlfriend can't get a flight to Thailand. And I'm thinking, hmm, you know, she's stuck in the UK. Which is, that, that's okay. Yeah, because sure. they understand it like mm. the Thais are trying to understand we can't get home. Yeah. I feel that people who are here now from most countries, they can get home. They're yeah. just not trying hard enough, mate. Mm. Okay, fair or enough. Or it's just not, maybe not there. They just don't want to go. Or maybe they just don't want to go there. <laughs> maybe they just don't want to go. <laughs> uh, 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 who wants to get COVID? None of us. No. Uh, Yvonne, uh, down, uh, okay, Yvonne and John Tien, she says, a very simple question, uh, what do I do if I need assistance to depart Thailand? Simple. Speak to Darren. Simple as that. Easy. easy. She wants to depart. Yeah, she wants to depart from Thailand. So, yeah, if she needs sorting out with the visa. She just asked me. It was a question that just before I came on, mm. I wrote down, and that is Yvonne in, uh, in John Tien. We'll put all, all of Darren's details will be on uh, the, uh, the, the the links today, won't they, Bobby, yeah? Yep. On, on YouTube channel and everything. Uh, but, yeah, what, what what do you see then? What, what do you see things going? I mean, do you, what's your sort of outlook on things now? I mean, what's your daily routine now? Are you still Do you still go out to eat? Do you still do things? Or have you changed your routine? You mean as a as, as you as did, working as working. working and a private life? I mean, you know, before we used to go to work, we used to go out, we used to eat, we used to socialize. Is that all changed now for you? Yeah, I mean, I'm being as frugal as everybody else. You know, we you've got to, you've got to take care of your pennies, and you know, you've got to be careful with, with what you're doing because we don't know what's around the corner either. 
mm. you know um, we've been like I said we've been here a long time we've been through a lot of stu- a lot of stuff couple of coups we've been through all sorts but you know end of the day we we just got to we've got families mm. and the hardest thing in the world is being in a country where you're trying to run a business with nobody here and you've also got a family to look after as well mm. with no backup you know, not like other countries where, you know, like the UK, you can go to the Dole office and so the well, social. We haven't, and we haven't got any backup. Well, we haven't. I mean, so, you know me, I've got married and two kids. I've yeah, got no backup. We fight, you, you're fighting every single day yes. for everything that you get. Yes. And that's what makes it, okay, it's a nice place to live, but that's what makes it harder, mm. more difficult, because mm. you can't do the things that you probably want to do. I mean, a couple of years ago, when there were thousands of tourists... We didn't care. We didn't give a shit. Care. You we know, if you, you wanted a car, you go and buy one. Absolutely. If you wanted a new bike, you go and buy one. But yep. not now. No. You think, you know, well, it's like my car, it's five years old. I'd look, touch wood, I'd love to change it. But? No. Exactly. No, I've just had it repaired, so <laughs> I'm just... Now I'm, I'm just holding on to what I've got. Have you still got one, one wind wiper or... Uh, no. We've got two now. 4,000 baht. For what? A set of windscreen wipers. 4,000 baht for yep. two windscreen wipers. I swear to God, I can show you the bill, mate. One of the one of the bulbs had gone on the front. Headline. He's driving a Ferrari. Those are uh, oh, Ferrari windscreen wipers. German car. You've got Mercedes, Mercedes, haven't you? Yeah. What is it? Mercedes what? It's only a C200. It's well, you only. say it's only a C200, but it's only four grand for, instead of a, for wiper blades. No, well, that's why I won't be buying another. I was going to say. And the front, front headlight, one of the bulbs had gone. Right. 1,000 right. baht for a bulb. <laughs> for a... <laughs> a neon bulb or whatever they call them. There's a know? lot to be said for Toyota. You do know that, don't you? Oh, I'll be going there next. I'll tell you what, mate. I, I, I just, I, I just. Do you know what? I'm, I'm because I've, I've grown up now. I'm not going to buy a new car. I don't blame you. I'm going to buy a second hand one. I don't blame you because I don't go a million miles, and the difference is with the tax being at three hundred percent on import cars, you've lost a million baht as soon as you drive it off the forecourt. Correct. So it's not worth it. Well, I like my little car, my little Toyota that I took for a service the other day, and I walked out, and the whole service was 1,760 baht. There you go. There you go. I could have got one window wiper for that. <laughs> oh, don't rub it in, mate. <laughs> don't rub it in. I'm dying to fart. I've got to say <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you're a bit touchy today, aren't no, you? Yeah, no, so I, I think the immigration will be looking at the visa scenario mm. over the next few months. I think they will be looking at making it Giving people when they come in a longer visa than the old thirty days that we used which to be I think, used to, which I think is maybe yeah. sixty days yeah, or sure. ninety days. Um, whether it's going to be in this term of the leadership we've got now, obviously there's a lot of rumours going on, and you know, in the big house um, up there that there might be a change. Um, then they might have new ideas about letting foreigners in, and which we're hoping. And giving them a longer visa when they come in, so they, mm. you know, why give? As we always said, why give thirty days? And if you want another thirty days in the old days, you had to go to Cambodia and give them the money. Well, we, we, we spoke, we've, we've we, gone through we had this. Loads, we we had loads. I can't believe you how many messages I, I had on this when we spoke about this last yeah, time, yeah. and we said we couldn't understand why all the foreign people that come here go from Thailand and go over to Cambodia, give them all their money. <laughs> and then come, come back, back into Thailand. Same day. It don't make sense. And you had to pay a fine because you were coming back the same day. Yes. You yeah. know? I just, is the, uh, I mean, just a question. I, uh, I know one that somebody told me just for come on. The TM30, is it? Scrapped, no. It's, it's not in, it's not in. No. Right, the, people are still asking for it, though. Yeah, the TM30 is needed for the first time. Is, it, is so, that for residential? Is it? Yeah, so okay. let's say Bobby moves to 30 stroke 4 moon 9 yeah yep. in Pattaya yeah if he's not registered that address it does it one time okay but then he can go anywhere he doesn't have to change his TM30 until he changes his address so it's only when you do so your what address. if you've never done a TM30 you go down to immigration and do it do you have to do a TM30 yes is it compulsory at some stage, you're going to have to do it. Even even with people that have got like uh, work permits and visa, visas and everything? I've done it. Okay, interesting. Um, well, well, let's say for argument's sake, now, if you go for a residency letter yep. to buy a motorbike yep. or a car or yep. something like that, or yep. a driving license, mm-hmm. if you haven't got a TM30, they'll fine <coughs> you. Okay. And they won't give you the letter. 
Okay. So then you'll send you home to go and get your, your home so, details. So let me put in perspective. My driving license has just ran out. Just ran so, out. And I spoke to them and they said... Uh, you six look, months. No, 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 no. no. Mine's, mine's five years. No, they, no, they normally give you six months to renew it. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. do they? Oh, that's interesting. After the finish date, yeah. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty good. That's good. Yeah. Like oh, they that. do. Okay, fair enough. Um, TM30, they asked me for a TM30. Who for did? The first time ever. Immigration? Uh, no, the people that were going to do my license for me. Yeah, the reason they asked for that is because they can't get your residency letter without a TM30. Okay. Okay. I had a guy at the gym and... But you don't do that service, do you? Yeah, we do. You do the driving license? No, no, but we do... Our, we get the residency letters and TM30s and stuff like that. For the driving license? Yeah, oh, yeah. That's okay. We sorted them, Bobby. We sorted Bobby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Withers here. Yeah. He, no, he, he's, he's one of the sons of anarchy, I'm sure. He has got, he's got an old oh, leather. Don't go there. Don't go there, please. Oh, you've been there before, yeah? Uh, he, he watched it and then backed out, didn't you, Bobby? Oh. It's kind of violent. There isn't five minutes goes by without somebody getting shot. Have you noticed that? It's so yeah. violent. Yeah. yeah. Where did you get to, Bobby? What season did you get I'm to? I'm not going to say. I'm on. Go I'm on, live, tell us. Right? Come on, no. tell us. I'm at the beginning of uh, season seven, and it's pretty nuts. It took him si seven seasons to work out that it's <laughs> violent. Yeah. Well, he's violent. It's addictive. It's addictive. It's, it's, it's addictive. It, is, I can't, it is. It is. It's violent when your mother-in-law smashes your wife's head in, and then kills her with a fucking. <laughs> Pitchfork or whatever it was, that you know, was pretty gnarly. Was that bad? That was. What, what, so bad. Do you know what? Hang on, hang on, guys. I'm What's on the season? same as him. Whoa, slow down. I'm not that far. S season seven. I'm not that far. I'm on three. Oh, you got a long way to go yet, mate. You just blew it for him, man. You just blew it. There's about another two hundred thousand people going to die before you <laughs> get to work. <laughs> <laughs> You've just popped my cherry. Do you realise that? I know. Gee. Sorry, it's okay. So okay, so you can do okay. So I'm going to let you do all that. Well, Tara divorces him, and then <laughs> should we carry on? <laughs> no, yeah, I can do that. You know that delete button you've got there for this guy here. Yeah, you heard, you heard it. It's in your brain. Listen, you know we're going to put happen. we're going to put all of today's details on screen. We're going to put your, all your details as per normal. We we'll put your website on there. Anything that comes through, of course, uh, we'll send it your way. Yeah. yeah um, anything you want to add to today's conversation in any way whatsoever that's information wise, not toilet wise. <laughs> <laughs> is that what is that you're drinking? Eh? What is it? It was one of them Dyralite things, you know, the, with oh. all the. Yeah. And did did the um, the toilet incident happen from bad food? Do you know or? I think it was some prawns on Sunday, I think. Um, hey, it was nice, though. It was like prawn curry, you know, really nice. And until, then, and until, then, until. Until the volcano. Until everything <laughs> opened, you know. I'll tell you what, I didn't realise your body could all that much stuff. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, it's, terrib it's horrible. It's horrible. We, got, we have a sound effect on that uh, machine right there. Do we? Which one do we have? We're not going to play it, though. <laughs> oh, we have that one, don't we? We do. We do. We have the yeah, we, yeah, that we, one. Yeah, we have yeah. that one. Yeah, we have that one, don't we? It's terrible. No, yeah, you put it on. <laughs> I'm busted again. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I will say, I will finish with this. If you're planning on coming here on holiday, don't go through the aggro of 31 steps. Okay, give it a bit of time, see what they change. Yeah, if you're going to book up for Christmas, that or whatever, that might be a good time. Because I think things will change by then, and it will be a lot easier to get here. Mm -hmm. Who honestly would go through the thirty-one steps? Is not, the question. I mean, they're just making it thirty-one not, hoops, and no one's going to want to go through thirty-one. Not, not now, Bobby. No. no, only people who, like I said, if you're desperate to see your kid, you'd run over hot coals, wouldn't you? You yeah, know, so absolutely. Only these sort of only people with families. Um, yeah. If you're a single lad, you just want to come here for <coughs> a jolly. Either consider somewhere else or wait to see what happens. What What about um, the guys that go to? I uh, just want to get this out of my head. Tell me, just, just I've got it in my head for a second. What about the people that say in the UK that go to the visa immigration places in the UK and they want, say, a, a visa to come here for? Uh, let's just say that we get a business visa, for example, or another visa, or whatever, every time. Do they still have to go through all their moves, even though they've got that visa? You mean if they've already got it or yeah. they want a new one? No, if they've already if they've gone and they've got a new visa from the UK and it's in their passport to come here. No, they here. don't, no. So they just have to come here, yeah. they have to stay the 14 days COVID, uh, uh, and then they can come out. Well, this is what I'm saying. Do about they still have to do the 90 days, though? The 90 days payment thing up front, do you know? No. Oh, they don't? Okay. No. Interesting. It's only this tourist visa. Just the tourist visa. Yeah. That's if, interesting. If, if you're on a retirement visa, a business yep. visa, yep. you've got a work permit yep. like me and you, you've yep. got a yep. family, mm. you're in and out, boom, boom. 
we, so we, this we, is only applying to tourists only applying to tourists mm. that have got no real ties here mm. ties to thailand this yeah interesting so um if you're living here and you need to go home get a visa before you go mm. something that's more permanent because that'll help you when you're coming back bobby how far how far ahead are we are, are having an, an implant implant mm. oh uh a chip a chip of a chip to uh monitor us for the rest of our uh, adult it, life it's gonna happen and of course everything's gonna be on there that it's gonna be our visas on there our medical uh conditions are gonna be on there it's all our information about us how far away do you think that is from reality of us actually just coming through immigration and scanning our arm or our hand or whatever well how, they are chipping people in sweden already right now yes I mean, they're doing it mm. but to you know make it a worldwide global uh lockdown kind of thing to do forget about it it's 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 on the way it's on mm -hmm. the way what was that movie called where that guy Interesting. that uh, assassin had the barcode on the back of his head? What was that called? Do you remember? Oh, oh that, 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 that was uh, Agent 40... Whatever it was. What's yeah. it was? Agent, uh, yeah. I have one of them. Barcode. Go, back. <laughs> Go through Big C. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Bill Boop. Gates has come out through many videos that mm. have been very recent, and, and he said, you know, it's, it's just going to happen. It's just a matter of time. time. So they're working on this. Mm. This is, but I would have thought with the advances they have in a place like China, where they're very, very advanced, and they, they, they use, you know, I've been there, and they just use all their, their phone all the time for scanning. There's no money; you never yeah. see any money. I mean, they're, they're pretty advanced. I mean, surely they would have a good idea from the facial recognition that they do, from everything they do. Surely they actually really do know the real figures of of what happened over there. They must do. Yeah. I mean, you know, it was it's weird how it suddenly became a big blow up over there and the world went crazy over it and then when the world went crazy over it china went we don't have anything it was weird no mm. yeah you know they sort of set the ball in motion and then let the ball just continue around. the snowball effect yeah because yeah. that's what's happened you know china's got a lot of people on it got billions of people and you know you, you look you look at what they buy in and you know, at the moment, they're going to different countries and buying out companies that are mm. struggling, big companies. Yeah. You know, the Thailand, they're, they're building the railway. You know, Suwana Boom, number two phase is just finished. I believe that's been backed up by the mm -hmm. Chinese bank, mm -hmm. you know, um, and different things like that. They're building hotels in Bangkok. and st You know, so th they're getting in like they did with Cambodia, with Sinukville. I mean, they turned that from a nice little holiday place into uh, my the new tiny town. My you know? my friend told me that we are we are the uh, the mackerel in the water, and the Chinese are the piranhas coming in. And I totally agree with that. I do as well. That's what I agree with. Yeah, I think they've set the ball in motion. It's Disney World, the Disney World thing, uh, is that a Chinese uh, uh, enterprise that's coming, or is that United we States? We don't know. We don't know on that one. What's the one know. in Hong Kong? Does anybody know the one in Hong Kong? Is that from where? Do we know that from? No. 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 Be nice if you if you know where that's from, guys out there, uh, which is the Disney World in Hong Kong. Let us know who the consortium is that owns that one, because I would imagine they're the people mm. that are going to be coming here. That 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 new terminal they built here is beautiful, Mike. Mm. Mm. It's got it's got a train, an underground train that can take you from terminal to terminal. Don't worry, it's been built by that's British where, construction yeah? people here. Yeah, where is it, that? It's Savannah Boom. They've okay. got they've got a brand new terminal. Okay, one point. It's 1.2 billion baht terminal. Okay. That's not even opened yet. Wow. It's 95% finished. Um, so my a friend, a very good friend of mine, was is the construction director on that. So. Well, they're going to extend you to power as well, aren't they? I mean, that's that's okay, that's shit all. It, do you know what? A in shed, mate. Do you know what? When I went down to to Utapal and they said now it's open, uh, the, our new international airport and all that, you know, <laughs> all the, whatever. We went in there, and I I can't tell you how much of a shithole it is <laughs> i mean anybody anybody in their right mind anybody just tell me guys please so you've got hundreds of thousands of people that are going to come through that terminal through that airport and the guides puts down a beige carpet <laughs> right. a beige cut magnolia whatever it is you know like it's trashed the yeah. first it's day. the color of your t-shirt bobby yeah. yeah that's the car carpet not lino carpet yeah I mean, it's already Oop. spilt coffee, food, and it's not hardly used, and it's coming up at the edges. It's a shithole. Oud, Oud, have you ever been to Oudon Airport? 
be ten times better. Utapau, <laughs> when you go through security, they've got a shitty old wooden wooden desk, haven't they? Yeah. And two people stood at the side of it yeah. and just looking at your passport and letting you through. The, the security is just absolute shit. It's like Dad's army. It is. It's yep. a joke. It is, yeah. a, it is a joke. I mean, you think they're going to renovate say. that airport for the? Uh, no, this is this is the new this is the new terminal they built. Oh, this is the new one. The new one at Utapau. Yeah. Oh, they wow. built the new terminal. Then they all said, it did, the, "Let me put it this way: they built the new terminal. It was all done. It was all open. Right, let's open. Yeah, but one guy forgot to order the steps so you get off the planes. <laughs> so they built the airport and they got no steps, so mm. nobody can get off the planes at the airport because they haven't got any steps." So they mm. had to wait and postpone it more to wait for the steps to open it again. Mm. And then so the people could walk onto the beige carpet. Yeah, onto the beige carpet, yeah. Right. And then through the Dad's Army security. <laughs> and there's nowhere to sit. But then there's nowhere to sit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it's a joke. And now they're going to say Who's that on first? they're going to extend it and it's going to be an international airport with international flights. Well, they've got to do a lot, a lot of to, work yeah, to, to bring work. that up to scratch. It's in a good place. Don't get me wrong. I think the place is good. Yeah, because it's the old it's the old navy place, isn't it? The army yeah, place. Yeah. But it's uh, in fact we took the first time I ever went there, we took a wrong turn in, and we ended up into this like anger, and then suddenly there was all these people around us with guns. Uh, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. yeah. uh, we were like we were like in this air raid anger. We took a wrong turn in into this thing, and we took a wrong turn into the army depot. And suddenly all these guys came out with guns pointing them at the car, and I went, I think we're in the wrong place, babe. Because <laughs> <laughs> because a friend of mine he built the the second and the first terminal he's got a proper security pass mm. for all areas yeah mm. and he said it's eerie he said when you go through the airport and it's you could you you could hear a pin drop in, in here uh, in Sawana boom oh, and, and and oh yes yeah, yeah. The new, well the new one's not open yet yeah. he said but he said what they can't get their head round is why would you build a new terminal when you've got nobody coming through yeah but don't you see don't, don't, the, but don't you look if you look at what's happening, Darren, I mean, look at the roads that are being built. Look at the roads that are being mended. Look at the infrastructure that's being built. They're still building condos and places, yeah? Mm. They still want to extend this. They still want to do Don't you know that somebody above knows what the plan of attack's going to be? Of course. You know, yeah. isn't this just a what they're in now? Isn't this just like a big board game that's all, it's already played out? But we're only down halfway down the board game because they know what's going to happen. You know, let's get rid of all the people. Let's do this. Then we can do this. Then we can do this. Then we can do this. And that's where we get to. Uh, you know, is it not all a big game? Would you not agree, Bobby? I'd agree. You know, and we don't say it. We There's a method to the madness. Yeah, yeah you know? there is. I think there is. Yeah. But it's selfish. You're selfish. You're building, you're building a, a new, new airport. You're building all these new roads and with Chinese technology and, and da, 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 new railways and this and that. And the people are starving. Mm. That, that, that's the, it, the, hang on a minute, let's stop. Who's giving them the food? Uh, nobody. We are. Yeah, we are. The Falangs are giving them the food. Mm. That's the sad part about it. Not, not their own people. It's still the Falangs now that are doing the food parcels and everything for them, mate. Mm. You know, see them and they're doing the what they can, and they're doing a great job. But and of they course, are. they're not even scratching the surface. No, they're not even scratching the surface, which is really sad. I mean, I know people up north that have just got families that are just pff, they, they probably up north they've probably gone back fifty years, mate. Oh, they you have know, definitely. They have. My wife's just been up there. She just said everybody's refer, you know reverted back to like going to the planting, trees, planting yeah. stuff, and, and yeah. trying to grow stuff, eating, eating frogs and shit. Yeah, yeah but, but but can you blame them? No. It's called survival, and that's it. And End that's off. what they're good at. And that's what they're good at, that's because that's where at. they came from. L but we're not. They, luckily, but for we're them, not. luckily for them, it's not another Ethiopia, is it? They're growing stuff, mate. You know, my missus, she's got a piece of land, and she grows everything on it. Mm. You know, big big pieces of fruit and bananas and all. So, yeah, how do you know how to do that? Mm. Again, it's survival. And, and they're, they're living off their own land. And suddenly what they're growing in that land becomes currency. Correct. That's the important thing. It becomes currency. Have this, swap that for that, do that. And it goes back, like you say, it goes back 50 years. But they're good at that. Yeah. We are not good at that. No. Yeah, you understand me? They're, understand. They're, they're, they're built, you know, the Thai people are built to survive and they're good at it. Mm. Yeah, and they will survive somewhere or another. They, they, they are really good at adapting. We, because where we come from and what, the way we've brought up, are nowhere near as good as them at surviving. Mm. And they will survive. 
they will survive. There's going to be a lot of casualties on the way, but I think they will survive. They'll come out of it, but they need help. And that's one of the things that I find. We're not going to go too deep into it, but that's one thing that really bugs me is because they don't get help. It's the reincarnation thing, isn't it? This is the Buddhist reincarnation. You 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 come from a poor family. It's because you was a bastard before. Mm. You know, if you're a dog with its balls hanging out in in some temple and its back legs are broken, which I've seen before, dragging its ass end along the floor, people won't help it because you must have been bad before, mm. and that's mm. why you come back as you are. And this is this is what it comes down to. It's the haves and the have not. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know that the the top ten families in Bangkok own sixty percent of the wealth in Thailand. I mean, sixty percent. Nuts, say eh? That is nuts. It's mad. <laughs> it's but you know it, again, the Thais are give you know they, they believe that by giving these extra holidays in November and December, it's going to increase you know tourism for Thailand. Mm -hmm. Right, increasing tourism, they're not bringing any revenue in because all they're doing is just circulating the money that's well, it, already there. It's the carousel effect, isn't it? And what they're doing is they're forcing their own people to go deeper in debt. Absolutely. Because they're taking holidays that they wouldn't normally do. True, 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 true. Yeah. Thought of the day, Bobby? Do we have a thought of the day from you that you want to say before we depart today, sir? Darren, that was great. I mean, you just kind of nailed it. You just brought it all into perspective right there. Thank you, man. You're welcome, Mike. Good, good. Simplicity, you know. This is all forcing us to be simple again. Mm. You know, the ones that haven't been trained to be simple, we got to be simple or else, uh, you know, you'll perish. So go, get back to the earth. Get back to the garden. Get simple again. Good, good. Darren, thought of the day. Last before we go. I'm dying for a crap, man. <laughs> <laughs> My thought of the day I'm sorry is... sorry about that. I've okay. had a bad stomach for three. <laughs> you go, listen, mate. I'm going to press that button. You go for a crap and enjoy yourself. <laughs> uh, thought of the day is I can't wait to go back to Cat and caveman and hit my missus over the head with a club <laughs> come on wow <laughs> <laughs> from darren thank uh, you of course bobby at the end uh, it's all thank you from us all in the studio it's been a great day again enjoyed it love it love it let's go see you bye-bye yeah, talking heads podcast live from pataya thailand with your host dave d join us weekdays check out all the latest updates on talkingheads-podcast.com